Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020, where at long last I got the opportunity to fly the Blurry 11 across the English Channel, as it was historically the first to do. It is the RIP edition, produced by Wings42. There are three versions of the Blurry 11 in that package, and this is the most difficult one. And La Manche, I believe, is the one that flew across the English Channel for the first time. The other one is uh, Blurry 11 that actually still flies. It is a museum piece, and I made sure to set my pilot mass to my actual mass, which is 155 pounds. And I topped off the fuel, though it didn't seem like we needed all of that. We could have been lighter. I selected the Channel Gliding Club outside of Dover as a starting point, which was a grass field. I felt that was appropriate, but for the landing, I really wanted a proper runway. And so I just went with the Calais Dunkirk Airport. Now, they waited for winds, so I just made it easy on myself and made sure that we didn't have any severe winds to start off. That doesn't pro prohibit the simulator from changing the winds as we go along, though. So we're just making sure that on takeoff, I am not going all over the place. After that, it could be hard. Now, the Blurry 11 did have the, it was the first plane to have modern controls. It has uh, actual joystick to control things, if you will, and also rudder pedals. And here I'm just uh, tuning the sunlight so that we get a better look of the plane. And, but otherwise it has some quirks, like for instance, it twists the wings in order to create roll instead of having ailerons. And of course it has a wood frame in front of us and we can see the ground underneath us and everything. So yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting plane and a daunting plane to try and fly. And uh, spoilers, we're not gonna take off directly the first time. But here I go, making my first attempt to take off in it. Again, winds are not a problem, uh, but the torque from the engine will be a problem. There is that. And just the ability to control it, given how slow it goes, is a trick. It basically, it tops out at about 40 knots. Uh, I mean, I didn't actually break the plane, so I don't know what the stated max speed in the sim is. But you can't go much farther than 40 knots. And... yeah. It's just interesting to control it. The thing is... Uh, at different speeds, you're going to have to do a different amount of roll in order to just keep it flying straight. At slower speeds, you need to do more roll, and at faster speeds, you need to probably do less. And that makes it hard on takeoff and landing, of course. And here, well, obviously, that hasn't worked out. But for the flight, for the most part, I'm going to have to be maintaining a constant rightward roll on my stick. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, uh, basically using most of my roll authority on the stick just to keep it steady, and also quite a bit of rudder, because when you're going so slow, it's important that you actually have coordinated turns. Yeah, uh, you might have noticed that little side slip indicator on planes, but not paid too much attention to it, but it because it wasn't so important. With this plane, we don't have a side slip indicator. But it's important. <laughs> you have to make make sure you do a coordinated turn with the rudder, otherwise it all goes out of whack. And it really can't bank at too much of an angle before... You, you see this is a side slip right here, and so I use rudder to stop that, but it has a strong tendency to side slip. And I'm trying here, but I don't want to smack into the trees either. It doesn't have much of a climb rate. It takes a while for it to climb anywhere, and we've got trees to worry about. And yeah, see, that's a side slip again to the left, and trying to correct that, but it's, it's not easy. It took a few tries to get that right, and the trees are always... ah. And again... I didn't take it from the first lift off in this case. And I was trying to avoid the trees, but I just banked too much, and so it just went unstable at that point. This is the time that actually worked. Uh, so we had those failures, and I've shown all the failures that I had in trying to do this flight, start this flight from Dover. But this one, uh, basically what I did was I tried to make sure that I went faster initially. So... It was the problem of getting off the ground while being sort of too slow. It's not exactly stalling, 
that there just wasn't enough air over the control surfaces, especially the wing roll, because it's twisting the wings in order to roll, uh, that it wasn't very stable. Here it's a little bit more stable, but still, it's quite a strain on the wrist to keep it flying at all. And one hour is about as much as I wanted to do with it. And that's about how long the flight is going to be across the English Channel. Uh, it actually has fuel for longer. And I wouldn't recommend trying to use all the fuel in it. Uh, you will probably have some wrist issues. Unless you play some sort of trick uh, in order to control it. Alright, so we cleared the trees and we are on our way to Calais. The actual historical flight was done in 1909, and the plane itself was quite an innovation. First of all, it's a monoplane, unlike the Wright Flyer and many other planes at the time. And I mentioned the control surfaces. It was used as a trainer all over the place, and it was a fairly popular plane. The attempt to cross the channel was brought about by a daily mail prize, a thousand pounds, which is quite a lot of money in those times. And that prize was, of course, won by Louis Blerio. You can also thank him for headlights for cars. In fact, uh, his headlamp manufacturing was how he funded his aircraft business. So, there's Dover and Dover Castle down there. Though, I don't know about that building in the center of it. <laughs> okay, and uh, White Cliffs to our left, but I was too busy trying to keep this thing flying straight to try and get a nice look at it. And going into the external view is always dangerous, so I only went to the external view briefly because uh, I don't have any reference and holding it steady while in this view is not so good. A lot of the time across the channel I drifted down towards the water and I had to correct myself. There's no altimeter here or anything like that, so just uh, trying to do my best. And the weather conditions did change. You know, I started off with clear skies, but clearly we've got a lot more clouds and we ended up with some wind, but fortunately it was a tailwind. So it wasn't too bad. At least it wasn't like a crosswind or anything like that. And eventually I saw the French coast. And it's us merrily trying to get there safely. And there's Calais. Of course we are traveling slower than cars. Though not necessarily cars of the time. Cars of the time were pretty darn slow. Uh, but also slower than many ships. Though again, not slower than the ships of the time. I don't think they could go 30 knots. Maybe, but uh, these days, of course, they can. Much more than that. Whether a bicyclist could beat us? Possibly. <laughs> uh, basically, basically got bicycle tires, as was traditional at this time. Turning was tricky, because actually at this point, I needed my full roll just to keep it steady. So actually, I was turning with the rudder. Uh, basically yawing and trying to get it over there. So yeah, it was interesting trying to turn this. It felt realistic though, I mean, realistically challenging, and I'm obviously quite a bit high, but then again this is going so slowly that the runway is very long compared to the amount of time it takes to travel with this. So I wasn't too worried, but yeah, we just wanted to make sure to descend without overstressing the plane. go. At least this didn't have a whole lot of trees in front of the runway like some airports do. That would have been more of a trouble. And I'm gonna show you the full landing run as we as we get down there. It was, uh, it was an adventure. I mean one hour is not too bad or anything. It's certainly a doable flight. But at no point did I feel safe. Uh, I could not let go of the control stick at any time. Most planes you can. Uh, you trim it out and then you can let go. But uh, not this one. And of course a lot of planes at that time did not have 
trim or anything like that, so they would also not be so easy to fly. And I heard some squeaks from the landing gear, and we are down. Really, after takeoff, as long as you can keep it flying steady, it's not too bad. Takeoff is the most difficult part by far. So, as I wrap up this flight, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.